Ooh. Real quick. Hey. I don't have a... Let's put a I'm not going to put a hat on. It's all right. Um, real quick, just water. I'm doing water, man. Doing water for a few. I'm not even... I'll see what happens. Um, I'm leaving tomorrow. It's tomorrow meeting. It's just, oh, it's close. Oh, pretty soon the vet's coming on. I better get ready for this. Real, real quick, real quick. Everybody's giving these testimonies on cops. I want to give my uh, dealing with cops. No bad things for me. Yeah, I'm fortunate. Uh, actually, you know, it, it was in my neighborhood in the South Bronx at the time. What happened because uh, the, the gangs were, you know, uh, guarding their territories and stuff like that. There was a concerted effort. We talk about in the 50s. 50s and into the 60s, but it was basically the 50s. It was considered effort by basically three elements was the um, um, organized crime, the police, and the politicians. They all said, put the drugs, namely heroin and stuff like that, into the South Bronx and also the Lower East Side. Uh, they didn't realize at the time, but those are you know, two ghetto areas. But but they didn't realize it at the time, so that's what they did. So when it time, gave time for me to join the, the gang, there was no gang to join because it Drugs decimated the thing. That's why they started the drugs, because they thought that the gang members were going to start listening to, to the likes of James Baldwin and Malcolm X and Lorraine Hansberry and, you know, people like that. And they were going to like, yeah, you know, overturn, overturn the system or whatever they thought they was going to do or whatever they thought we were going to do. OK, so um, uh, but what where we backfired really was both the South Bronx and Lower East Side. If you look at the, the patterns, it's a hub. In other words, all of the uh, what do you call that uh, trains? <laughs> Trains and, uh, and you know, uh, highways, you know, Rapid Moses, you know, highways to, to get to the suburbs, whatever have you. So suburbs started to come in, get their drugs and keep on going. That's what it happened. But let me go to the cops. Let, let me, my mind thinking with the cops. So I started with the earliest. The earliest one I remember is when I'm, when I'm, was that earlier? Did I do this thing? No, I think this was earlier. The first time, if I can say it the first time. No, 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 no. Well, I, I'll make, make like this the first time. You can't see it, but there's a there's a scar on my hand. I can't see it now either. It's a scar there someplace. Where is it? You can't see it, but there's a scar there. And that scar is because at when, um, I don't know what it was, maybe it was, no, it wasn't Christmas, but something like that, some some holiday, uh, we, my, we got a sword. My brother and I got, well, my brother got a sword. I think my brother got, he must have got the sword. You know, it was a sword, uh, a tin sword, you know, with, with, with a scarab, you know what I mean? So you take it out, you know. And so since we only had, come on, we poor kids, you know, projects, you know, <laughs> since we only had one thing, I got the uh, scarab and he had the sword, you know what I mean? And we went, you know, doing the thing, you know, like, the, you know, like the whatever have you. Well, some freak happened, something freak happened, and the tip of his, of his sword hit the tip of the of the scarab and he hit it and, it and it ripped into my skin and must have hit some nerve because I screamed. I don't actually remember screaming that hard. But anyway, uh, I was taken to the Lincoln Hospital, the old Lincoln Hospital, the one before the one before the one at, at 143rd Street, Mar you know, Mars Avenue. Now, this is one over the other way where actually where my first wife was living, well, where she grew up. But doesn't matter. There's the other other side. Was, I forget where it was. Ah. I have to look it up, but I'm not going to tell you. The, the old Lincoln Hospital, the first Lincoln Hospital, let's put it that way. And and so they the, the cops came in the cop car and they took me to the hospital. You know, they called us back then. You know, you called, hey, blah, blah, blah. I said, it must have been 58 then. So I'm like, no, no, no. And, you know, the cops came and took me to the hospital. No ambulance took me to the hospital. They, they, they stitched me up, a few stitches, right? Cops stayed with me, drove me home. <laughs> That's it, right? Okay, no, I was done. I didn't talk to my grandmother. Stuff like that. Okay, the next time uh, is I ran away from home. In, in, in the fourth grade, at nine years old, I ran from away from home. I ran to the Bronx Movie Theater. I won't get into the comic. Don't worry about it. Just don't, don't worry about that part. Anyway, so I ended, ended up at the Bronx Movie Theater. I was waiting early in the morning, like six o'clock, whatever. I got up and, and, and tried to get. I won't get into the details. Anyway, so I sat there. I had a little, a little suitcase, a little a suitcase. No suit case small one. had my stuff in it you know and i was there sitting at the bronx movie there waiting for the bronx movie theater to open because why i'm a cinephile i don't know i just i like movies right <laughs> right okay cop the beat cop walks along you know all these are white guys by the way. white white beat cop walks along he says hi I said, hello he said um what what you doing waiting for the movie there. well um uh, aren't you supposed to be in school? I'm not going to school. I'm going to move there. He said, well, where do you live? I said, well, you know, give me an address of Patterson Projects, you know. And so he says, well, come on, let's just, you know, don't you think you're, you know, 
ask me some other questions. Actually, he didn't talk much. He just said, well, 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 come on, let's go home. You know, it's just grab my hand. And we just walk me home. <laughs> that was it. Okay. And it's a weird thing. Nobody said not to get punished or nothing like that. Anyway, whatever, whatever. Okay, now let's leave all that stuff. Then all through the, I missed the whole stuff to, to, through the, even through the 60s. I never, somehow I never got whatever, whatever. The only thing, it was incidents. It's like, you know, like it's, it was the 68 when we got with the, whatever, marching and stuff like that. So I never had any, whatever, whatever. Okay, now here's the cheers weird things. Then I guess we get into that, well, I was Air Force. Uh, then the 80s, then things started to change. That's when you start having all this stuff, you know, and all that, the Abbott the Lumiwas and all the rest of that stuff like that. Okay. Then when I left my job, my cushy, my, my definitive job in 96, uh, whatever, I started to travel a lot. And um, and I travel, I went to, well, I travel with no money. Right? I travel with nothing, right? And then one time I was in Florida, right? And I ended up in Delray Beach, Florida. Now, I knew I was going to be there for a while. I can't explain the whole thing, but I, had, I knew I was going to be there for a while. But where I live, um, what I, what I, was, I was very heavy into my, my exercises and stuff like that. So where I lived, um, I lived, you know where they, 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 all those tennis players in Delray, they go to Delray Beach because there's a good tennis court there. I think the people like uh, Connors and whoever, those people like that. They go, so I lived a little bit up from that tennis court. So you, you go where it's like a, uh, the old ghetto kind of area. You know, I lived with, with uh, two old old ladies and I had a little a room in there. Anyway, so we go through the thing. Then you go, like like I lived on this here, right? Then you go, here's the tennis court. Then basically you go to downtown uh, uh, or you go over the train tracks. Then you go to downtown uh, Delray Beach, right? Then you go through downtown Delray Beach. Then you get to the causeway, whatever. Then you have then the rich people's houses and then the beach, right? So I had this thing. Then I would get up every morning at four thirty, and I would I would get to the beach right before the sun came up because I would do the first light. You know, it's like first light. Um, I would do my prayer and meditation and I'd do some other stuff, and I would think that I would go back. I had a whole routine, but like the second that I was thinking about it, man, I realized that I had nobody knew I where I was in Florida. This is before real cell phones and stuff like that. I didn't have I didn't have a whole lot of money. I didn't have any. Anybody, nobody knew I was there or whatever. Anything could happen or whatever. So I thought, I'm, I'm walking at 4, 3 in the morning. It's dark. It's, uh, this, we're in the South. I wasn't thinking the South. We're in Florida. <laughs> and so for some reason, now I have to understand, I have a, we have a code in the South Bronx. You, go, you don't go to cops for nothing. I don't care what it is. You just don't go to them for, for nothing. <laughs> you solve the problem in your little, your little thing. I mean, you go for something like, yeah, you get cut and the cop comes and take you to the hospital or something like that. But that's, you know, but but, but this time, you know, the cops are not. That's when we have all the horrid things where people are, the cops are really going crazy and I don't know what, what it was. Okay. So, for some reason, I have no idea. Um, it went against my own grown-up code. I said, if I'm going to do this anymore, let me just go to the police department and talk to these boys. Right? So I went there in daytime one and talked to them. I said, look, I do this ritual every morning where, I, you know, I go, no, no, I was, I, I'm sorry. I have to, can we go back? I have very long locks. I, you know, I have my locks, dreadlocks, you know, or you all say dreadlocks. I just say locks. And they were like fashion locks. I look very good in my locks. Don't worry about it. Okay. So I'm talking to the cop. He was very suspicious, da, da, da. And then, you know, we talked a little while and he said, well, and then I was telling him my whole thing. So, you know, then he, then he, all of a sudden he was going to cooperate with me. Well, you know, understand what I was saying. He said, well, you know why we, you know, we're a little, I was a little leery of what you're saying. Well, I'm paraphrase now, because at the time in California, there was this brother that, you know, had locks too, but he would, he would just walk up and walk California. I don't know where he was walking, but the cops would always stop him. And at some particular point, he got a lawyer or something like that, and they sued California for a lot of money, right? So this guy in Florida was thinking that I was going to be like that kind of thing. I don't know why. I mean, I wasn't in my head. Okay, so I talked to him. So I said, okay. I said, what? He takes out his card. I think he was a lieutenant or whatever he was. You know, he was a day shift guy, you know, head of the day shift. And so he writes on the back, you know, please afford Mr. Sloan, da 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 he writes on the back of his card. Now, so he gives it to me. And he says, you know, that's what he says. I used to have this, I had this tiny billfold. On one side, I put the, uh, I had my license, and on the other side, I had his card, right? I might have something else in there, but it has card. So when you open it, then you can see my license, and you see the police, you know, his card, right? And um, now here's a trick. 
when I when I realized I had to do this and I realized where I was, the reason why I always carried my license because I had some ID on me. See, you know, I, I, I can't have to say this. I wasn't, I did this wasn't like, like, like conscious thought. It just sort of happened. It was almost like, you know, the universe, universe said, hey, yo, you know, Anthony, you, you're not, you're not too, you're not too bright, right? So we got to give you some, some protection. So just da, 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 da. So this is what happened. I had nothing to do with this stuff I'm trying to say. Well, lo and behold, the second, after I got that card, the second night of well, morning, I was walking to them. Cop, cop, I'm, I'm walking, I'm, I'm almost, um, I'm in down, going, just entering downtown, right over track, entering downtown. Just cop, cop, pulls up, ee! and I mean, I'm literally like one of those movie things, before the cop car was fully stopped, the door opens, and this woman, cop, woman cop comes out, and she's, the first words out of her mouth was like, have I dated you before? I'm going like, no. Nah. Now, he, or immediately, my, my mind clicked in. I said, okay. I know what's going on, right? I don't know how, I just knew what was going on. Well, you know, grew up in the city. So I, she expected me to go like, you know, let me put it this way, and the cop stops and whatever they start, the energy they start, whatever have you, you have to first of all, just calm down. No matter what that person is, you just calm down. The other thing I was thinking is very, very, very simple, right? She wanted me to either curse her out, do something, you know, well, I don't, I don't mess with no white, blah, 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 whatever she thought I was gonna do, right? But most of all, they do that because they want to hear you speak, right? Because I just look, let me have locks, you know, I'm, I could be just one of them, you know, dumb, dumb Negroes that walk around and they talk like, or you know how they, actually, I actually think they do that to find mentally challenged people so that it's easier to apply them and they do, they, they start messing with them and stuff. They, no, it's cops just mess around, okay? Well, that didn't happen. So she said, let me see some ID because I wasn't talking to her, right? Yeah? I pulled it out, showed her my, I pulled it like that. She said, what's that? Talk about the card from the, from the from, you know, from the desk lieutenant, whatever he was. So I said, take that out. Let me see that. And I took it out. And she's talking just like this. And she, she reads the back. Please afford Mrs. Long. And she said, oh. And she, well, she said, oh. She said, oh, thank you very much. You know what I mean? Uh, he said, oh. Yeah, that's what it, first he said, how do you know this person? I said, well, I, I just sort of, I kept on just not really talking, right? And so she gave it back, and I just kept on. And for the rest, for my whole time there, they, were, they never bothered me at all. What am I saying? Well, for, first of all, for me, preparation is everything, which I'm, I'm, right now I'm in a stage of preparation for some other stuff. So I can't really involve myself in all the demonstrations and stuff like that. It has little to do with anything but that. It has something to do with else. But preparation, and for me to even have that thought to go against my own uh, the South Bronx code of you know not 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 talking to cops is like amazing, I guess you know. So anyway, so that's what happened. So what am I what am I saying? I'm saying the, 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 what's happening now, especially with all all cops. But the way I don't know how to recruit. I can't speak for now, right? Because if you can't speak, if you can't talk, if you can't communicate, or if they see you as better than, or if they and every black person they gotta jump up on, you have a problem. So I don't know. You know what I mean? Like I said, it was extraordinary that I would even think to talk to any cops or go, much less go into a police station and get a, and get some. Actually, it's a pass law. I got permission. This is like being a self help. I got permission. Basically, I got because yes, well, I got permission to go and do my morning ritual at Delray Beach morning, but I had to have a pass. Basically, a part. Okay, <laughs> had a pass. Through. That's what happened. Just wanted to tell you that little message from me. T, from the Patterson's taking the train, letting you know what I only suspect from, uh, uh, well, from an ADOS reality.